ਕਿਉਂ ਹੋਣ ਲੋ ਪਿਓਰ ਮਾਤਾ ਜੀ ਓਮ ਨਮੋ ਭਗਵਤੇ ਵਾਸੁਦੇਵਾਯ ਓਮ ਨਮੋ ਭਗਵਤੇ ਵਾਸੁਦੇਵਾਯ ਓਮ ਨਮੋ ਭਗਵਤੇ ਵਾਸੁਦੇਵਾਯ ਓਮ ਅਗਨਿਆਤਿ ਮਿਰਾਦਸ਼ਯ ਗਨਾਨਾਰਜਨ ਸ਼ਲਾਕਯ ਚਕਸ਼ੂਰੁਨ ਮਿਲਿਤਮ ਯੇਨਾ ਤਸਮੈ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਗੁਰਵੇ ਨਮਾ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਚੈਤਨਯ ਮਨੋਭਿਸ਼ਟਮ ਸਾਪਿਤਮ ਯੇਨ ਭੂਤਲੇ ਸਵਯਮ ਰੂਪਾ ਕਦਾਮਯਮ ਦਦਾਤਿ ਸਵਮ ਪਦਾਂਤਿਕਮ ਵੰਦੇ ਹਮ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਉਤਪਦ ਕਮਲਮ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਗੁਰੂਮ ਵੈਸ਼ਨਵਾਂਸ਼ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਰੂਪਮ ਸਾਗਰ ਜਾਤਮ ਸਹਗਣਾ ਰਘੁਨਾਥਾਂ ਸਵਮ ਸਜੀਵਮ ਸਾਧਵੈਤਮ ਸਾਵਦੂਤਮ ਪਰਿਜਨ ਸਹਿਤ ਕ੍ਰਿਸ਼ਨ ਚੇਤਨਯ ਦੇਵਮ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਰਾਧਾ ਕ੍ਰਿਸ਼ਨ ਪਾਦਾਂ ਸਹਗਣਾ ਲਲਿਤਾ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਵਿਸਾਖਾਂ ਸਵਮ ਸ ਹੇ ਕ੍ਰਿਸ਼ਨਾ ਕਰੁਣਾ ਸਿੰਧੂ ਦੀਨ ਬੰਧੂ ਜਗਤਪਤੀ ਗੋਪੇਸ ਗੋਪਿਕਾ ਕਾਂਤਾ ਰਾਧਾ ਕਾਂਤਾ ਨਮਸਤੁਤੇ ਤਪਤ ਕਾਂਚਨਾ ਗੌਰਾਂਗੀ ਰਾਧੇ ਵਰਿੰਦਾਵਨੇਸ਼ਵਰੀ ਕ੍ਰਿਸ਼ਬਾਨੋ ਸੁਤੇ ਦੇਵੀ ਪ੍ਰਣਮਾਮੀ ਹਰੀ ਪ੍ਰਿਏ ਵਾਂਚਾ ਕਲਪਤ ਰੂਬਿਆਸ਼ਾ ਕ੍ਰਿਪਾ ਸਿੰਧੂ ਬਿਆਏ ਵਚ ਪਤਿਤਾ ਨਾ ਪਾਵਨੇ ਬਿਓ ਵੈਸ਼ਨਵੇ ਬਿਓ ਨਮੋ ਨਮਹ ਨਮਾਮ ਵਿਸ਼ਨੂ ਪਾਦਾਯ ਕ੍ਰਿਸ਼ਨ ਪ੍ਰੇਸ਼ਟਾਯ ਭੂਤਲੇ ਸ੍ਰੀਮਤੀ ਭਗਤੀ ਵੇਦਾਂਤ ਸਵਾਮਿਨ ਨਿਤਿ ਨਾਮਿਨੇ ਨਮਸਤੇ ਸਾਰਸਵਤੇ ਦੇਵੇ ਗੌਰਵਾਨੀ ਪ੍ਰਚਾਰਿਣੇ ਨਿਰਵਿਸ਼ੇਸ਼ਾ ਸ਼ੂਨਿਵਾਦੀ ਪਾਛਾਤ ਦੇਸ਼ ਤਾਰਿਣੇ ਜੈ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਕ੍ਰਿਸ਼ਨ ਚੈਤਨਿਆ ਪ੍ਰਭੂ ਨਿਤਿਆਨੰਦ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਅਦਵੈਤ ਗਦਾਧਰ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਵਾਸਾਦੀ ਗੌਰ ਭਕਤ ਵਰਿੰਦਾ ਹਰੇ ਕ੍ਰਿਸ਼ਨਾ ਹਰੇ ਕ੍ਰਿਸ਼ਨਾ ਕ੍ਰਿਸ਼ਨ ਕ੍ਰਿਸ਼ਨਾ ਹਰੇ 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 ਰਾਮਾ ਹਰੇ ਰਾਮਾ ਰਾਮ ਰਾਮਾ ਹਰੇ 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 ਕ੍ਰਿਸ਼ਨਾ who is hosting this ah uh, hari krishna prabhu um uh, hari krishna devotees if anyone have any question kindly please post your question here or you can even ask unmute yourself you can ask your question ਪ੍ਰਭੂ ਆਈ ਹੈਵ ਵਨ ਕੁਐਸਚਨ ਓਕੇ ਗੋ ਹੈਡ ਮਾਤਾ ਜੀ ਅ ਪ੍ਰਭੂ ਜੀ ਲਾਈਕ ਆਈ ਲਾਈਕ ਐਸ ਵੀ ਹੀਅਰ ਅਮ ਲਾਈਕ ਦ ਪੀਪਲ ਹੂ ਲਿਵ ਇਨ ਅ ਧਾਮ ਲਾਈਕ ਅਮ ਜਗਨਨਾਥਪੁਰੀ ਔਰ ਇਨ ਵਰਿੰਦਾਵਨ ਆਲਸੋ ਲਾਈਕ ਆਈ ਹਰਡ ਦੈਟ ਦੇ ਈਵਨ ਥੋ ਦੇ ਆਰ ਨਾਟ ਫਾਲੋਇੰਗ देयर uh in a, especially in the puri they are uh, this bengali people they eat fish and all that and even in vrindavan they like they are vrajvasis like all of them are maybe not following um and they are sometimes say like a uh, like a bad words uh, uh, also but they say like because they are vrajvasi we, we shouldn't say anything to them um so is is it really true if they are like uh so they go back because just by uh, they are uh, staying or uh, born in a dham so they are superior um just by staying in a dham you want to read this for those this? yes prabhu ji for those who lives in a badra um, badra krishna the district of uh, mathura i am the object of all worship even if the resident of they, that place 
fail to properly cultivate the religious principle that one should observe in the holy land, they still become devoted to me. Just by virtue of living there, even if the Kali, the present age of a coral, has them in his grip, they still get a credit for living in this place. My devotee who lives in a Mathura is just as dear to me as you, Brahma, and your sons, Rudra, and his followers, and Goddess Sri and my own self. Wow. That's wonderful. Hmm. We all should go and live in a holy dham. No, but wherever you make chant, then that also becomes a holy place, no? Yes, Prabhuji, yes. Hmm? Yes. If you chant, then the place also becomes a holy place. Mm -hmm. Yes, Prabhuji. Says here in this verse, You want to read? Yes, Prabhuji. Auspicious indeed are the places where there is a temple of Supreme Personality of a Godhead Krishna, in which he is dully worshipped, and also the places where there flows the celebrated sec sacred rivers mentioned in the Puranas, the su uh, supplementary Vedic literatures, Anything spiritual done that is certainly very effective. There are many atheists who oppose the worship of the deity of the Supreme Personality of a Godhead in the temple. In this verse, however, it is authoritatively stated that any place where the deity is worshipped is a transcendental. It does not belong to the material world. It is also said that the forest is in the mode of the goodness and therefore those who want to cultivate the spiritual life are advised to go to the forest. Vanam gato yad dravim Asrayeta, Srimad Bhagavatam 7.5.5 But one should not go to the forest simply to live like a monkey. Monkeys and other ferocious animal who lives in the forest, but a person who goes to the forest for spiritual culture must accept the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of a Godhead as a shelter. Vanam gato yad dravim asrayet. One should not be satisfied simply to go to the forest. One must take a shelter of the lotus feet of Supreme Personality of a Godhead. In this age, therefore, since it's impossible to go to forest for spiritual culture, one is recommended to live in the temple community as a devotee. Regularly worship the deity, follow the regulatory principle, and thus make the place like a Vaikuntha. The forest may be in a goodness, the cities and villages in a passion, and the brothels, hotel, and restaurant in ignorance. But when our lives in the temple community, he lives in a Vaikuntha. Therefore, it is said here, Shreya Sam Padam, it is the best, most auspicious place. It in many places throughout the world, we are constructing communities to give shelter to devotees and worship the deity in a temple. The deity cannot be worshipped except by devotees. Temple worshippers who fail to give the importance to the devotees are a third class. They are the Kanista Adhikaris in the lowest state of the spiritual life. As it is said in Srimad Bhagavatam 11.2.47, Ar Archayam Eva Haraye 
पूजा यह श्रद्धा ये हते न तद भक्ते सु चानिये सु स भक्त प्रकृत स्मृत A person who is very faithfully engaged in a worship of the deity in the temple, but does not know how to behave towards devotee or people in a general, is called the prak prakrata bhakta or kanista adhikari. Therefore, in a temple, there must be a deity of the Lord, and Lord should be worshipped by the devotee. The combination of the devotee and the deity creates the first-class transcendental place. Aside from this, if a grahastha devotee worships the saligrama sila or the form of the deity at home, his home also become very great place. It was therefore customary for the members of the three higher classes, namely the brahmana, kshatriya, and vaishya, to worship the saligrama sila or a small deity of Radha Krishna or Sita Ram in each and every home. This made uh, everyone everything auspicious, but now they have given up the deity worship. Men who become modernized and are con consequently indulging in a sort of these sinful activities, and therefore they are extremely unhappy. According to Vedic civilization, therefore the holy places of pilgrimage are considered more sacred, and still there are hundreds and thousands of holy places like Jagannath Puri, Vrindavan. हरिद्वार रामेश्वरम प्रयाग एंड मथुरा इंडिया इज अ प्लेस फॉर वर्सिपिंग और फॉर कल्टिवेटिंग स्पिरिचुअल लाइफ द कृष्णा कॉन्शियसनेस मूवमेंट इनवाइट्स एवरी वन फ्रॉम ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड विदाउट डिस्क्रिमिनेशन एज टू कास्ट और क्रीड टू कम टू दिस सेंटर्स एंड कल्टिवेट स्पिरिचुअल लाइफ परफेक्टली यस प्रभु जी वेरी नाइस यस Can read this also. Yes, the sacred lakes like the Puskara and places where saintly person live, like Kurukshetra, Gaya, Prayag, Pulahar, uh, Pulaharshrama, uh, Naimisaryanya, the bank of the Falgu River, Setu Bandha, uh, Setu Bandha. प्रभास द्वारका वाराणसी मथुरा पंपा बिंदु सरोवर बद्रिकाश्रम नारायण नारायण महेंद्रांड मोस्ट सिमिलरली प्लेसिस आउटसाइड इंडिया वेर देर आर देंटर्स ऑफ द कृष्णा कॉन्शियसनेस मुमेंट and where radha krishna deities are worship must all be visited and worship by those who want to be spiritually advanced one who intend to advance in a spiritual life may visit all the places and perform ritualistic ceremony to get a result a thousand times better than the result of the same activity performed in any other place so you can understand hmm? yes prabhu ji can read also in this verse and in verse 29 stress is given to the point harer archa sri tas chaye aur hare archa in other words any place where the deity of the supreme personality of god head is worshiped by devotee is a most significant krishna consciousness movement giving the population of the entire world a chance to take advantage of the krishna consciousness through the iskon centers where one may perform deity worship and chant hari krishna maha mantra in this way obtain a result with effectiveness increase a thousand times this constitute the best welfare activity for human society this was sri chaitanya mahaprabhu's mission as it was predicted by him in a chaitanya bhagavatam chaitanya bhagavatam antya khanda 4.126 prithvi prithvi te aache yat na nagaradi grama s 
सर्वत्र प्रचार हईबे मोर नामा श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु वॉन्टेड हरे कृष्णा मूवमेंट विच इंस्टॉल डीटी टू स्प्रेड द एवरी विलेज एंड टाउन इन द वर्ल्ड सो दैट एवरी वन इन द वर्ल्ड माई टेक एडवांटेज ऑफ दिस मूवमेंट एंड बिकम ऑल एस्पीशियस इन अ स्पिरिचुअल लाइफ विदाउट स्पिरिचुअल लाइफ नथिंग इज एस्पीशियस मोग सा मोघ कर्मनो मोग ज्ञान विचेत सह भगवत गीता 9.12 नो वन कैन बिकम सक्सेसफुल इन फ्रूटिव एक्टिविटी और स्पेक्युलेटिव नॉलेज विदाउट बीइंग कृष्णा कॉन्सियस एज रेकमेंडेड इन अ शास्त्र एवरी वन शुड बी वेरी ईगरली इंटरेस्टेड इन टेकिंग अ पार्ट इन कृष्णा कॉन्सियसनेस मूवमेंट एंड अंडरस्टैंडिंग द वैल्यू ऑफ अ स्पिरिचुअल लाइफ so oh, is it clear hmm? yes prabhu ji very clear hmm. it's very nice thank you so much prabhu ji hmm. any other question prabhu is this only um, the place where you are worshiping um, refers to temple worship only or at home also in case there is no temple nearby the deity is worship no okay hmm yes prabhu any where the deity is worship is a consider as a holy place hmm? okay prabhu yes Hare Krishna Prabhu as it uh, i have a question prabhu please accept my humble obeisances as all glories to shri prabhupa so mm. um when uh, um when we associate with devotees prabhu uh, it is mentioned that we have to associate with the similar kind of uh, uh, devotees so that there will be you know kind of uh, uh, so um can a devotee judge another devotee prabhu <clears throat> well you have to judge him according to their kind of a advancement whether they are first class second class third class hmm mm -hmm. is explain in acto of instruction no mm. you must worship you must what So here you have to. One should mentally honor the devotee who chants the holy name of Lord Krishna. One should offer humble obeisances to the devotee who has undergone spiritual initiation, diksha, and is engaging in worshiping the deity. And one should associate with and faithfully serve that pure devotee who is advanced in undeviated devotional service and whose heart is completely devoid of the propensity to criticize others. You have to make some distinction. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, hmm. So you have to know who is in what level, and accordingly you have to respect them. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, bro. Hmm. So unless you uh, evaluate how you're going to uh, pay your respects, correct? Yes, true. So of course, this is done positively, mm. not in you know, mm. uh, you know what we say, finding faults. Mm? Mm. The whole idea is to not find fault, no. Mm. 
Yes. Yes, bro. Mm. Any other questions? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, please accept the humble obeisances of Lord Shishila Prabhupada. Mm. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu. So Prabhu, the, in your, uh, I think the, one of the recent this week's lectures uh, in YouTube, thing, uh, you mentioned the process of enlightenment. So, um, what is the difference between enlightenment and the self-realization, Prabhu? And uh, the second thing is, when we talk about enlightenment, I have heard this in, in all the, so many other gurus before. So, they say, to you have to meditate, you have to get the blessings of some yogis. And in Ramakrishna, what they call, they say that, Vivekanan, no, Ramakrishna, Paramahamsa, he, something he touched the forehead of Vivekananda he got enlightened and all those things mm. but when it comes to uh, Krishna consciousness what is that difference between enlightenment and self-realization and uh, is it same or is it that the paths are different Yes, Prabhu. Unless one is enlightened by the knowledge given by the spiritual master, he cannot see things as they are, even though he remains constantly with the spiritual master. This incident at Kaliyataha is very instructive for those eager to advance in Krishna consciousness. Yes, Prabhu. Enlightenment that you are enlightened with the knowledge, you know? Yes, Prabhu. And self-realization means something that after being enlightened with the knowledge, you realize that uh -huh. knowledge, you know? Yes, Prabhu. You understand? Got it. That's yes, why in the qualities of the Brahman is that jnanam, vijnanam, astikyam, you know? Jnanam mm -hmm. and vijnanam. Jnanam means knowledge and vijnanam means realized knowledge, you know? Mm. Yes, Prabhu. So unless you get the knowledge from the spiritual master who is going to enlighten you with the knowledge mm -hmm. and then as you surrender more, you get realized, realization. Hmm? Enlightenment doesn't mean you will get self-realization, no? Yes, true. Correct? Yes, true. Mm -hmm. So our whole idea of enlightenment means you get this transcendental knowledge, you know. Mm. Also mentioned by Krishna, you know. And here it says here in Bhagavad Gita, try to approach a self-realized soul to get this knowledge, right? Yes, Prabhupada Parent. Yes, bro. But knowledge, you see, so this is enlightenment. And then when you get the knowledge, right, having obtained real knowledge from a self realized soul, you'll never fall again into such illusion. So this is realization, no? Yes, bro. So by this knowledge, you'll see that all living and beings are but part of the supreme in other words that they are mine so these are two different aspects realization comes after enlightenment no mm. so. yes so knowledge is very essential you know mm? yes sir. even if you are considered the most sinful of all sinners even you are situated in the board when you are situated situated in the board of trans knowledge, you will be able to cross over the ocean of miseries. So this is realization, no? 
Hmm. In fact, first thing is to get the knowledge, you know. Hmm? Yes, from so explained by Narada in this verse. Narada was saying this thing. You want to read? Yes, from O Brahmana, thus by the Supreme Lord Krishna, I was endowed first with the transcendental knowledge of the Lord as inculcated in the confidential parts of Vedas, then with the spiritual opulences, and then with his intimate loving service. So you see, this is how it worked for Narada. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes, true. Enlightenment means that you get some light, no? Yes, true. That's not artificial light. A light means enlightened with knowledge, no? Yes, true. I because was thinking Ram even en enlightenment was same as self-realization. Uh, that means no. the servant of the Lord, I was thinking like that. Yeah, but this is clear, bro. Mm. Self-realization comes after you get this enlightened knowledge, no? Yes, true. Hmm? Yes, Prabhu. Clear? Any other questions? So, I uh, have a question on, on death, Prabhu. Oh. So, we have the four uh, problems, right? Janma, Mrityu, Jaraviyadhi, Dukkha, Dosha, Anuvartanam. So, uh, Janma, we know, Prabhu, from Srimad Bhagavatam, it is uh, Kapila Muni says to Devahuti, uh, how uh, difficult is Janma? The entire chapter talks about how death is painful. Like, uh, can you show some verses if the where death is mentioned is very painful, and also like um, Jaran Vyadi. You want to read? Yes, Prabhu. O oh, elevated demigods, at the time of death, severe, unbearable pain takes away the consciousness of all living entities who have accepted material bodies. Don't you know about this pain? Hmm? Yes, Prabhu. Yes. So, therefore, death is very, very painful, you know. Mm -hmm. Not uh, there's no such thing as peacefully dying. In. Yes, Prabhu. Is there anything like that? Peacefully he died. Yeah. But every materialistic person they say, you know, no, my father or someone they all peacefully passed away. On an outward, it looks like very peaceful, but uh, uh, it is not as per Bhagavatam. Mm. I don't think uh, I don't think it is uh, <laughs> nobody knows anyway, correct? How the person is dying, right? Yes, from So how to know unless we read from the scriptures? Yes? Yes, from Otherwise how to find out? Isn't it? Yes, from Even at the pain during birth no one knows. Yeah, that pain is explained in the third canto, no? So therefore, third canto, third canto you know, how? Yeah. Another verse here.
death is not at all pleasing and since everyone is exactly like a condemned man being led to the place of execution what possible happiness can people derive from material objects or the gratification they provide mm. so that is not at all pleasing you know hmm? mm. but there's a difference between the devotee and the normal uh, what do you call that person hmm? yes prabhu so so is it true prabhu it is mentioned that the, like 40000 scorpions when they bite at once that is a pain you get during the time of death i have heard this from multiple people what that again uh they say at the time of death you would get the pain equivalent to uh biting of 40000 scorpions I I don't know where they all say like that, but I don't know where's the verse for that. You know? Okay, yeah, that's what I want to check with you, bro. Is that a verse? I don't I don't know where the reference for that. Unless you can show me some reference, uh, it'll be mm-hmm. difficult to verify. You know? Yes. yes? Bro. So I I don't know where it is said that it is uh, by the scorpions. You no. Know? Okay. Hmm? so we can show you what the bhagavatam say but it it is very painful anyway hmm? mm-hmm. yes yes sir hmm. so therefore the devotees uh, and they are different actually the devotees they you know they are not fearing that they see mainly because they have taken shelter of krishna is it mm-hmm. is the saving grace for the devotee is hmm? let me take out that verse for you hmm yes sir can you read the devotees who worship you as a shelter of all being dis- disregard death and place their feet on his head but with the words of the vedas you bind the non devotees like animals though they be they be vastly learned scholars it is your affectionate devotees who can purify themselves and others not those who are inimical towards you you understand mm. so because the devotees they've taken shelter of the lord so they are not fearful of that you know? mm. the classic example is durva maharaj no when death came he stepped over death and he went back to the spiritual world right yes hmm? is it not yes sir so that is how it is you know and proper give the example of the cat carrying the kitten and cat carrying the mouse no yes prabhu yes so and that i mean to come to that level where you are not fearful of death unless you got krishna you know completely in your heart it's going to be difficult to i don't know maybe you all can do but i don't know about myself can no problem to keep our mind focus hmm? mm-hmm. yes yes sir so therefore at that you know the devotees uh, it's explained here it's very uh, it's a very painful situation and there's good chance that we will forget you know yes from uh so what to do no so for advisors here you want to read this at the time of death one is certainly bewildered because his bodily functions are in disorder at the at that time even one whose 
throughout his life has practiced chanting the holy name of the Lord may not be able to chant the Hare Krishna mantra very distinctly. Nevertheless, such a person receives all the benefits of chanting the holy name. While the body is fit, therefore, why should we not chant the holy name of the Lord loudly and distinctly? If one does so, it is quite possible that even at the time of death, he will be proper, properly able to chant the holy name of the Lord with love and faith. In conclusion, one who chants the holy name of the Lord constantly is guaranteed to return home back to Godhead without a doubt. So this explains, no? Yes, Prabhu. Hmm? So our only hope is to chant, no? Hmm? Yes, Prabhu. So, so how is uh, like uh, uh, suppose a devotee is in a Kanishta platform, mm -hmm. and he was in that process, but you know he didn't complete the process, uh, and he leaves the body, and you know, already Krishna says that in a, in the next life he will start from where he left in the previous life. So, when such a person dies, Prabhu, is mm -hmm. still the death and birth a very painful? Uh, no, once those, he. Or, once he chants under the direction of the spiritual master and follow the uh -huh. four principles, then by the mercy of the spiritual master, he goes home back to God. It's, you understand? Because yes, the sir. spiritual master has promised that if you follow the four principles and chant 16 rounds, then you are going back home back to God. Mm. So we are going back on the strength of the spiritual master rather than our devotion, no? Right. Because, I mean, it's not very easy to come even to the Madhyama platform, no? Yes, Prabhu. Uh, yes. So what is our guarantee of going back? Unless Opa takes us back, that's going to be very difficult, no? Yes, Prabhu. Hmm? So our only, uh, what we say, strength is to satisfy our spiritual master. Just like, uh, what the name, the two sons of Kuvera were delivered, no? Yes, sir. The Lord says, I, I don't have anything to do with you, no? Mm. Correct. But because my devotee says so, Narada, therefore I am doing what I have to do. Hmm? Hmm. Right, you can read. Although these two young men are the sons of very rich Kuvera, and I have nothing to do with them, Devarshi Narada is my very dear and affectionate devotee. And therefore, because he wanted me to come face to face with them, I must do so for their deliverance. See that? Yes, Prabhu. So similarly, our only hope is Srila Prabhupada, you know. Mm. You understand? Hmm? Yes, Prabhu. Because Krishna sells himself to the pure devotee, you know, many times. Yes, I... It's a very important verse, you know. Read. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is situated in everyone's heart, as the Super Soul, sells himself to his devotees, such as Narada Muni. In other words, the Lord gives pure love to such devotees and gives himself to those who love him purely. Great self-realized mystic yogis, such as the four Kumaras, also derive great transcendental bliss from realizing the super soul within themselves. Yes, Prabhu. So, of course, we all know Prabhupada is a pure devotee. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So, our success is... So, because... Hmm? Yes? Sorry, Prabhu, go ahead. Our success yes, Prabhu, our is... success, so... It's only to take hold, uphold is 
principles, you know, four principles and chant 16 rounds. Mm. And Prabhupada said, yes, you will go home back to God. Mm. Correct? Yes, Prabhu. So, so that this means is if a person to... is still like... Mm? Sorry, Prabhu, your voice is... What is that? <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yes, Prabhu, I can hear you. So the person, uh, suppose, uh, uh, that means a devotee who is again taking birth, that means he has not followed the four regulative principles, at least I'm talking about in, in uh, ISKM, ISKCON. If someone is again uh, uh, taking birth, that means they have offended, right, Prabhu? Somewhere... Krishna says, if you are in devotional service, then you will go to heavenly planet and enjoy yourself and then mm -hmm. come back again and continue from taking birth in either devotee family or some very rich, uh, you know. Aristocratic families, yes, Prabhu. Carry on again, you know, from where you left off. Yes. So that's still there, you see. Hmm? Yes, Prabhu. So when such birth takes place, if the birth is still painful for them, isn't it, Prabhu? Yes. Everything in the material world is painful, you know. Yes, Prabhu. But, but because they are devotees, you know, uh -huh. so it kind of uh, helps in reducing those pain, you know. Yes, Prabhu. That's the unique thing of being a devotee. Krishna kind of... Uh, makes things not so painful you know for like difference between a non-devotee and a devotee you see but still yes, a ball, you know taking birth is definitely painful yeah yes yes mm. so why we should yes, come back that's the prince that is the point no we have got uh, a very powerful spiritual master and we have come in contact with him after many lifetimes, yes? So why we should not yes, become successful by taking shelter of him? Hmm? If yes. we don't do that, that means we are really stupid, no? Yes, Sorry, There's a story in Gaudiya Mata. This one devotee, he was the Siddhanta's disciple, then he fell down. You know? He, he did not practice very seriously. And then he died, you know. Uh -huh. He went to Yamalok and there Yamaraj told him, Oh, you, I know you, you are disciple of such a very powerful spiritual master. So why you are not, you know, taking up seriously? Okay, never mind, I'll give you another chance. Uh, you go back and make sure you become very serious in your spiritual life. So he did not die, he came out again alive, you know. And he related this story to to the devotees. <laughs> oh. So this story is there in Gaudiamat. But the point <clears throat> is this, you see how we have to become a little bit more careful, you know. Hmm? Yes, sir. How much is it? to chant 16 rounds and follow the four principles, especially if you got an Indian body, I don't see any problem, no? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes, sir. Correct? Is it? Yes, it says in this Can blow Jai Shraval Ramutam Chattu Chattu Ndi Marsh Pai Naan. You want to read this? Yes, Prabhu. Oh, my friends, sons of the Asuras, the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his super soul, feature always, uh, in his super soul feature, always exists within the course of the hearts of all living entities. Indeed, he is the well-wisher and friend of all living entities, and there is no difficulty in worshipping the Lord. Why then should people not engage in his devotion service? Why are they so addicted to unnecessary, unnecessarily producing artificial paraphernalia for sense gratification? Good point. 
Support. Because the personality of Godhead is supreme, no one is equal to him and no one is greater than him. Nonetheless, if a, if one is a devotee of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Lord is easily obtainable. The Lord is compared to the sky because the sky is vast yet within the reach of all, not only of human beings, but even of the animals. The Supreme Lord in his Paramatma feature exists as the best well-wisher and friend. As confirmed in the Vedas, Sayu, Sayujau Sakhayau. The Lord in his super soul feature always stays in the heart along with the living entity. The Lord is so friendly to the living entity that he remains within the heart so that one can always contact him without difficulty. One can do so, do this simply by devotion service. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam. As soon as one hears of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna Kirtana, one immediately comes in touch with the Lord. A devotee immediately comes in touch with the Lord by any or all of the items of devotion service. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam. Sakyam Atma Nivedanam. Therefore, there is no difficulty in coming in contact with the Supreme Lord. Koti Prayasaha. On the other hand, going to hell requires great endeavor. Wow. Uh, going to hell requires great endeavor. If one wants to go to hell by illicit sex, meat eating, gambling and intoxication, he must acquire so many things. For illicit sex, he must arrange for money. For brothels, for meat eating, he must arrange for many slaughterhouses. For gambling, he must arrange for casinos and hotels. And for intoxication, he must open many breweries. Clearly, therefore, if one wants to go to hell, he must endeavor very much. But if he, wa if he wants to return home, back to Godhead, there is no difficult endeavor. To go back to Godhead, one may live alone anywhere in any condition and simply sit down, meditate upon the super soul, and chant and hear about the Lord. Thus, there is no difficulty in approaching the Lord. Adanta Gobhit Vishatam Tamisram. Because of inability to control the senses, one must go through great endeavor to go to hell. But if one is sensible, he can very easily obtain the favor of the Supreme Personality of Godhead because the Lord is always within him. By the simple method of Sharavanam Kirtanam Vishnu, the Lord is satisfied. Indeed, the Lord says, Patram Pushpam Phalam Toyam Yome Bhaktiya Pariyachari Tadaham Bhakti Upahritam Ashnami Prayatatmanaha. If one offers me with love and devotion a leaf, a flower, fruit, or water, I will accept it. One can meditate upon the Lord anywhere and everywhere. Thus, Prahlad Maharaj advised his friends, the sons of the demons, to take his path, to take this path back home, back to Godhead, without difficulty. Yes. Amazing. Prabhu, amazing. I'm just making note of this. Yeah. So to go to hell, it's a lot of hard work, no? Yes, Prabhu. And to go back to God, it is very simple. Just open the mouth and chant Hare Krishna. Hmm? Yes? Yes, Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Hmm. No cost, nothing. Yes? Yes, Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. I think only pure devotees can do this. Mm. I like make this uh, uh, make this so simple. Otherwise, it is so confusing, and uh, that's why you need the all everybody. Uh, that's why yes, we need the guru. With the mercy of the guru, then we can get strength to overcome this meat eating, illicit gambling, and intoxication. 
without the spiritual master's mercy, it's very difficult, you know. Yes, Prabhu. So this we should understand. Hmm? Yes, Prabhu. Just have to chant, that's about all. Anyone can do it, even a child also can do. Huh? Yes, sir. Hmm? But to go to hell, wow, so much of work. Huh? Yes. Yes, Prabhu. But materialists, Prabhu, they find that easier than uh, doing this. And I think the reason is also stated because of that uncontrolled senses somewhere in the top. I just read, yeah. Whatever is produced by the materialists with great pain and labor for so-called happiness of Supreme Personality as the time factor destroys for this reason, the conditioned soul laments. Yes. Mm. Yes. The misguided materialist does not know that his very body is impermanent and that the attractions of home, land and wealth, which are in relationship to that body, are also temporary. Out of ignorance only, he thinks that everything is permanent. Yes. Yes, sir. You know, you cannot, you cannot try to enjoy this material world, you know. Yeah. Yes, sir. The Lord is not a fool, you know. No one is dear to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, nor is anyone his enemy, nor friend. But he gives inspiration to those who have not forgotten <laughs> him and destroy those who have. Yes, yes sir. So therefore, why not take the easy way out, you know, surrender yes, and, and make your life successful? To come to this knowledge itself takes many, many, many lifetimes, you know. Yes. You know, that is all in all. That's why you are fortunate. That's why Krishna says someone who knows this is a very, what, great and rare soul. Hmm? Yes, Prabhu. So why not become a great and rare soul rather than go and do all these crazy things, no? Yes, Prabhu. Yes. You must be yes. a fool. To go to hell, you must be a fool, no? You can argue. <laughs> yes, sir. These things all are some Hindu mythology. Because I'm an American, you know. I don't believe all this Hindu nonsense. Hmm? Yes? Yes, sir. Do you think yes, so? Is that some Hindu nonsense? Yeah. Hmm? Correct. Yes, sir. So therefore, it requires some more or less, not only intelligence, it requires mercy, you know. Mm -hmm. Piety, unless you have done heaps and heaps amount of piety, it is difficult for you to come to this kind of understanding. Hmm? Yes. Yes, Prabhu. Yesham Tvantakatam Papam. Yes, Prabhu. Yesham Tvantakatam Papam Jananam Punya Karmanam Tedvan Vamoha Nirmukta Bhajante Mamdra Davratanaha Persons who have acted piously in previous lives and in this life and whose sinful actions are completely eradicated freed from the dualities of delusion and they engage themselves in my service with determination. 
So it is not some joke that you can become a devotee, you know. Hmm. Any lifetimes you have to take. <coughs> yes. That's right. You must be a fool if you want to carry on, you know. <laughs> Correct? Yes, sir. Hmm? Dying like worms, you know. And then again taking birth. Yes, sir. Guarantee you can come back in a human form. Huh? Yes, sir. Yes? Yes, sir. It's foolish for a person to not become Krishna conscious. Yes, sir. Hmm. Definitely, Prabhu. That to the hell uh, things are. Uh, Srimad Bhagavatam 7 7 mm. is a great enlightenment. 7 7 8, eh? not 39. 38, is it? Okay. Mm. 8 and 39. Okay. Mm. So, we have to be very intelligent. Yes, is that? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Prabhuji. Accept mine too, all glories to Prabhupada. I hope, I hope you are doing good, Prabhuji. Hmm. Yes, by all your mercies. Always praying for my welfare. Yes. I thank you very much. So, Prabhuji, I have a similar question like what Baldev Prabhu asked. Uh, with respect to bhakti, like what is the right age to start a bhakti? And, you know, I have a misconception in my mind that if you do not start bhakti from the age of five, five or between the age of five and ten, that's what Prahlad Maharaj said. I mean, even though you have taken the shelter of a bona fide spiritual master, it's very difficult to go back to God. It's not difficult. It's it's impossible to go back to God right? if you do not start bhakti in the early ages. For example, if I'm taking my example for conditioned soul like me at the age of 48, 49, even if I take shelter and then initiation from a bona fide spiritual master, I mean, mm. it's, it's impossible. I mean, and here, you know, in this reference, you know, Bhagavad Gita 2.40, just like, you know, uh, so, right? In this endeavor, there is no loss or diminution. So, right, you are right. The, this verse is, you know, very much applicable to, you know, uh, souls like me that, yes, we will have some credits in our spiritual account. And then the next life, uh, you know, by the grace of, you know, the spiritual master and the Lord Krishna, if we come back, in the human form of life, then, you know, our uh, bhakti continues. So can you please clarify, Prabhuji, here, uh, what is the right age? You know, uh, do you know the Bhagavadam? There's a verse about Maharaj Khatwanga. You know, I, I heard that, uh, you know, past times, Prabhuji, but I don't remember the verse. He was fighting for the demigods uh, and then he was offered a benediction. He wanted to know how much time I have. Yeah. A few moments. Then he immediately came down and started practicing devotional service. And because of that moments of practice, he went back to God. It. Oh, hmm? just in a moments of practice? Oh, okay. Uh, that I... Anybody knows where that thing in first canto? Someone can help bring that out. Katwanga. It's from searching. I think in the first canto, something 14, 15 or something. Uh, second canto is 2 1 13, it says. Second canto, 2 1 13. Yes. So yeah, and Maharaj Katwanga. 
Okay. You can read. Yeah, the saintly king Katwanga, after being informed that the duration of his life would be only a moment more, at once freed himself from all material activities and took shelter of the, of, of the supreme safety, uh, the personality of Godhead. A fully... Uh -huh. That's right. But Prabhuji, just now in one of the words, I heard that if you are not doing bhakti throughout your life, when we say this word throughout your life means starts from age five or between age five or, or at the, let's say, early ages, right? Mm -hmm. Spiritual life starts the moment you get your spiritual master. Understand? Oh. Mm -hmm. So the moment you come in contact with the spiritual master and got initiated, then your spiritual life begins from then. So okay. as you are practicing as many years as you are able to, <laughs> then that counts, no? Right? Okay. Okay, right, Prabhu. Even it says here in this verse. It's only because uh, spiritual master like Sukadeva Goswami told him. Otherwise, if he just takes uh, to spiritual uh, surrender by himself without any spiritual master, it was not applicable, right? What's that again? You want to read this uh, first? Yes, sir. In this endeavor, uh, there is no loss or diminution, and a little advancement on this path can protect one from the most dangerous type of fear. <coughs> yeah? Yes. Yep, to the 40, yeah. Yes, a little advancement. You know, the same point is also said here in another place. <laughs> So we have to understand them properly, you know. Of course, who can start at the age of five? Doesn't mean that if you don't start at the age of five, then everything is lost or something. Not necessary. Okay. Ajamil started very late, no? Well, for Ajamil, I think uh, for the first 25 years of his life, you know, he was a pure devotee. And uh, <laughs> everything... As per the regulator principles. But the thing is that he fell down, no? Right. Yeah, he fell down after that. Yes, that's right, Prabhupada. You want to read this? Activities dedicated to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, even if performed in small measure, never go <laughs> in vain. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, being the Supreme Father, is naturally very dear and always ready to act for the good of the living entities okay yes. that's yes that's right Prabhuji. eight five forty eight let me make so that's why they say that anything that is auspicious must be done immediately no right right okay so a little endeavor saves us from the greatest danger no um uh, hmm? right Prabhuji. yes Better to start immediately rather than, you know, waste time, yeah. no? Yes, yes, Prabhuji. Whether it's five years old or 50 years old, you better start doing it, though. Yes, agreed, agreed, Prabhuji. Correct. Yes, yeah, so let's let's say, Prabhuji, even if we, if we go to the upper, I mean, uh, you know, higher planets, right? Uh, is there any way that we don't have to come back to the planet Earth and can we go directly from uh, the, you know, the higher planets to the spiritual kingdom? It's possible also. It's not that impossible. You climb from one planet to another planet to another and finally you come to Lord Brahma and you wait there until when Lord Brahma dies and goes back, you follow him and go back along with him. That's oh, also okay. Okay. But why why take all this trouble, you know, after millions and millions of years? Yeah. You can also fall down, no? Yeah. Yes? Yes, Prabhuji. Uh, better to become serious, you know, chant and go back to the spiritual world. Yeah. Correct? Mm -hmm. 
in this lifetime only. Okay, okay, make makes sense, Prabhuji. Correct. Yes. Oh, why we want to take millions of years to go back? We can go do it. In fact, the demigods themselves are praying to be born in this earth so that they can use this short time and go back to Godhead. Why we want to go the other way, no? Yeah. Yeah, we don't have to take a longer route. Yeah. Not intelligent, no? Yeah, that's right, Prabhuji. Yes. Yes, Prabhuji. Hmm. Right. That's why we have to take up the process of chanting as soon as we can. Yes. Hmm? And uh, Prabhuji, I, uh, I remember you said that if you chant along with Prabhupada tape, right, then hmm. the chanting becomes more effective, like, a, you know, a bona, along with the bona fide, uh, you know, uh, Mahabhagavat. Hmm. Yes, because yeah. you are hitting this uh, vibration, no? Yes. So, Prabhuji, with Prabhupada, can we chant every day with Prabhupada? All of our round? I'm going to read that. One should not at any time tolerate blasphemy and insults against Lord Vishnu or his devotees. A devotee is generally very humble and meek, and he. Oh, sorry. Okay, here. Yeah. Okay, sorry. sorry. You're going to the wrong place. Okay, with this. Lord Shiva voluntarily came to bless the sons of the king as well as do something beneficial for them. He personally chanted the mantra so that the mantra would be more powerful. And he advised that the mantra be chanted by the king's sons, Rajaputras. When a mantra is chanted by a great devotee, the mantra becomes more powerful. Although the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is powerful in itself, a disciple upon initiation receives the mantra from his spiritual master. For when the mantra is chanted by the spiritual master, it becomes more powerful. Lord Shiva advised the sons of the king to hear him attentively, for inattentive hearing is offensive. Let me make a note. Uh, I have to show it to my spouse. <laughs> 4, 24, 33. So, Mataji, to answer your question, yes, actually, I am chanting, uh, you know, along with the Srila Prabhupada's, uh, you know, uh, tape. Not 33, it's 32. 32? Okay. Mm. Okay, thank yeah. you. <laughs> okay. That's right, Prabhuji. Mm. Correct. Yes. Mm. So why not chant with the tape? Yes. And this is the instruction I got when I met you, Prabhuji, in Dallas. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yes, Prabhuji. So why not do this, no? Yes, Prabhuji. So uh, another question, Prabhuji, are Prabhupada's uh, morning walk conversations or letters are also considered as scriptures? I think yes, because Prabhupada doesn't speak anything out of the scriptures. What what's uh... in the Guru Puja, no? Guru Mukha Patma uh -huh. Vakya. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. 
So what is the meaning of that line? Hmm? Yeah. Correct? Yes. Hmm. So whatever he says is Sanskrit. Yeah. Correct? Yes. So even the letters are considered as uh, shastras. I, I I I agree. Okay. So but, the system that he has so kindly given is bogus. No, it's not. Yeah. Hmm? Yes. Yes, Rabuji. Correct. Yeah. So this is the problem, no? They think Prabhupada is an ordinary person. Yeah, no, he's not. Hmm? But Prabhuji, with respect to these book changes, did Prabhupada in any of his letters, scriptures, or morning walk conversations said that you that you know to his disciples at that time, okay, go back to the manuscripts and change the books. Uh, there is no recorded conversation, letters, or anything else. No, Prabhupada told when he read the Gita, there was some mistake. He said this should be corrected. But those were just the grammatical mistakes. No, about cow, cow protection and so many things like that. No? Uh? But I think, Prabhuji, because the two cantos of the Bhagavatam were not completed when... No, the point is that you cannot change the philosophy, you know? Yeah. You understand? Yeah. You can make some changes here and there, but you cannot say in the book that Krishna is not God, no? Can you do that? No, that, that cannot be done, yes. So, so still yeah. the book is valid, no? Correct? Okay. You understand? That's why Prabhupada said, you know, that no, they cannot change the philosophy. They make some corrections here and there, but the philosophy they cannot change, no? Yes. Hmm. So why not just accept and move on, no? Yeah. Making a big thing about the whole thing, no? Yes? Yeah, that's right, Prabhuji. Not even reading the books. First of all, you read the books, no? Talking about change books and change books. Huh? Yes? Yes, yes. Nobody is reading? Who is reading? Huh? Yes? Yeah. Understand? Hmm? Yes, uh, what's his name? Uh, Nikhil has a question. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, please accept my humble obeisances on glories to Shri Prabhupada. Yes. yes. Yeah, Prabhu. Prabhu, I have one question, Prabhu. It's about, uh, I know we, we all, uh, like Brahma is a creator, right? So my question is like when Brahma is creating us, uh, he can, uh, like, I mean, why doesn't he give the knowledge of Krishna at that point of time? Like when we are, uh, anyways, uh, he has that, uh, skill right over there when he's writing for us no, i don't understand your question what do you mean no? so you... Brahm, brahma will create us right prabhu like uh, okay. yeah so when he's creating so mm -hmm. in our fate why doesn't he give the knowledge of krishna at that point of time so that we remember krishna and we can do chanting from like no, brahma age? Brahma he did not create until the Lord gave him the knowledge, no? This is explained in the Bhagavadam that he got the, the Sriman Bhagavadam verses, no? Yes, and yes, Prabhu. Then after that he started creating, no? And uh, he was, yes, Prabhu. If I'm, I'm doing all this thing, I don't want to become proud, you know? Then mm -hmm. the Lord, oh, as long as you remember my instruction, you'll never be proud, you know? So Brahma could not create until he got enlightened by the Lord, no? Yes, Prabhu. Hmm. Uh, so he got enlightened and then he created us, right, Prabhu? At that point of time, when he was creating us, like I know he writes a fate of us, that's what we say, right? I don't know if it's correct or wrong. Hmm. Like uh, Brahma writes a fate for us, so we, we just follow that. Uh, so when he's writing 
why didn't he write our uh, like krishna about krishna umma is a secondary creator you know so okay. we are getting our karma because of what he did in our last life you know yes prabhu hmm so whatever we do, we are doing now that will be determining our next birth you follow oh okay got it prabhu it is not the brahma is determining our karma no it is what we do you know this life mm-hmm. that will be to us in the next life hmm? oh follow. okay yes yes prabhu so he's just following karma okay it is our action you know that predetermines our next activity oh okay okay huh? uh, yes prabhu got it prabhu mm. yeah uh, understood prabhu thank you prabhu yeah. trying to take out that verse for you sure Give me, give me a minute. Eh? Sure, Prabhu. Thank you. So it is us, you know, who determine what we do next life. What we do this life will determine our next life, you know. Okay, got it, Prabhu. You want to read this? Sure. Uh, the results of whatever a living entity does in this life are enjoyed in the next life. A person generally does not know how one uh, body is linked with another body. How is it possible that one suffers or enjoys the results of activities in this body in yet another body in the next life? this is a question the king wants narada muni to answer how may one have a human body in this life and not have a human body in the next even great philosophers and scientists cannot account for the transferal of karma from one body to another as we experience every individual soul has an individual body and one person's activities or one body's activities are not enjoyed or suffered by another body or another person the question is how the activities of one body are suffered or enjoyed in the next life you understand hmm? yes prabhu yeah yes prabhu it's clear prabhu thank you So according to your, you know, karma, you take birth again, next life. Huh? Uh, yes, Prabhu. You understand? Yes, Prabhu. So if they keep doing like a bad thing, they keep going down and down, right, Prabhu? Like uh, lower and lower birth. Yes, Krishna says those who are very obnoxious, sinful, I cast them to lower and lower birth, where they remain there perpetually. Oh, okay. Got it, Prabhu. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Prabhu. Understood. Hmm. So you can read the chapter 429, huh? 420. Yes, Prabhu. I'm noting it down, Prabhu. Hmm. 429. Yeah. Uh, Prabhuji, is there any other verse, you know, which says that, you know, chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and taking shelter of one of its spiritual master will nullify all your karmas which all the and you know all the sinful activities all the sinful karmas which you have acquired in billions of lifetimes provided we do not do or we do not engage in the sinful activities again the moment you take initiation from a bona fide spiritual master then by initiation process all your sinful activities are eradicated so, right, Prabhuji. So the sinful activities of this life as well as the billion, billions of past lifetimes also? Yes. Okay. Got it, Prabhuji. So, but the power of the spiritual master, yeah, he, he will clean, up, clean you up. No, Then oh. you can do devotional service. Otherwise, 
with sinful activities how to go to the Lord. Yeah. Hmm? Right. We cannot. So the yeah, Guru we cannot. Is, yeah, yeah, the Guru is, you know, very, very merciful, you know. That's yeah. why we cannot pay our Guru for what he has done. That's right, Prabhuji, yes. Listen. So without the Guru, not possible. Yes. Huh? Yes, Prabhuji, yes. Uh, Prabhu, one more question, Prabhu. So when we are reading uh, uh, like uh, like uh, Bhagavad Gita or Bhagavatam, is it okay if we read only the translation part or is, do we need to always uh, recite the shloka and then we have to read it, Prabhu? You have to read everything, you know. Okay. So more important because without the Guru's explanation, we may understand them wrongly, you know. Oh, okay, got it, Prima. Yeah, uh, but, but do we need to read uh, uh, like uh, Sanskrit also, Prabhu, or is it uh, okay yeah, if we read? It's good to chant the Sanskrit because it purifies you when you chant the name, the words of God, no? Oh, okay, got it, Prabhu. Sure. Correct. Yes, Prabhu. Yes, makes sense. Yes. Yes, Prabhu. Thank you. You can read this verse. Who oh, just now he asked the question. Uh, Amit Prabhu. Yeah. Uh -huh. A saintly person, just like fire, sometimes appears in a concealed form and at other times reveals himself. For the welfare of the conditioned souls, who desire real happiness, a saintly person may accept the worshipable position of spiritual master and thus like fire, he burns to ashes all the past and future sinful reactions of his worshippers by mercifully accepting their offerings. Okay. Okay. 11, 7, 46. Makes sense, Prabhuji. Now it's clear. Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> so that's why we surrender to the spiritual master. Yes. Without guru, that's not possible <laughs> to go to Krishna, you know. Yes. Yes. But yeah. Prabhuji, there are like so many saints in, in Vrindavan. Uh, I mean, so, so it means they must have a, you know, a bona fide spiritual master coming from the other Sampradayas, right? No, I said, yeah, there are four Sampradayas. Okay. Okay. You know, it doesn't mean that you have a spiritual master, means you are, you know, uh, you just like many people in Iskon, they're taking Prabhupada. Doesn't mean that they're going back to God. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. You have to be sincerely be guided, you know, by Prabhupada. How? to follow his instruction properly yes yeah? yes Prabhuji. Hmm. you get misguided by all these crazy guys then what will happen yes hmm? yes Prabhuji. and you know in reference to that Prabhuji, i was you know just a couple of weeks back I, you know i was when i was just scrolling the youtube we we know that you know in the iskon uh, you know sannyas he recently left his body he departed uh, gopal krishna goswami maharaj and all his disciples, you know, now they are glorifying and, you know, I just uh, listened to his will also. Now they are saying that, uh, you know, uh, Gopal Krishna Goswami Maharaj, Vani is more important than Vapu. Now their disciples are saying like this and read, you know, uh, his books. Hmm. I mean, what an irony, huh? I mean, Prabhupada when Vani is not important, uh, whereas... This Guru Vani is important than his Bapu. Hmm. So you see? Yeah. 
This is nonsense. <clears throat> they are very offensive to Prabhupada. As a result, you think they're going they can go back to Godhead? Hmm? I yeah, I don't think so, Prabhuji. Not this man, you know, they oh they say someone say they he came in his what celestial body, you know, going on a plane and going back. Huh? Yeah. You can see all these things means uh, what is your position now? Uh, you must also be a very what purified soul or something, huh? Hello? Yeah, that's right, Prabhuji. Yeah. Huh? Well, going back to Godhead, uh, they don't come in a celestial body, you know. They come with giant uh, Vijay, the uh, what? Vaikuntha attendants, you know. Huh? If anyone comes in that kind of celestial body, mean they only go to heavenly planet, no? Yeah. Huh? What? They're trying to kind of, uh, you know, cheat people, you know, that's all. Trying to say that, oh, he went back to God. It. How do you know, boy? Someone who makes mistakes and does disobey his guru, he goes back to God. It. Huh? There's, there's no way, yeah. Think. So people are mesmerized. Oh, he came in his celestial body. Yeah, that may be nice, but you, that is, celestial body is only for heavenly planet, no? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right. And going to heaven is terrible mistake. Yes? Yeah. Right. So if you don't know the Shastra, you become mesmerized. Oh, he went, he came, a huh? celestial body, yeah. Oh, he's going back to Godhead, huh? Understand? Mm -hmm. So if you know what is Shastra, you will understand. Yes? Yeah. So now they will say you can take Ritwik initiation from him, huh? <laughs> well, yeah, they they yeah, they're probably saying this, I think, yeah, because I think Bhakti I think who is that? Bhakti Charu, Swami Maharaj, some some disciples take something like this, you know, uh, Ritwik initiation from them and Yeah, yeah. They can do, no? Yeah. Really? Uh, they do, oh, bogus. Huh? They're so particular about going to hell, so, so that's why they want to particularly take about take the quick initiation from Bhakti Charu Maharaj. Yeah, right, Mataji. Yeah. And so then, uh, uh, right, Prabhuji, yeah. So we have to be careful, you know, to not just get carried away by their so-called sentiment. Hmm? Yes. 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 Yes, yes Prabhu. And also in all other groups, Prabhu, the consciousness have degraded so badly and they're all like now desiring for material things has become like so common. Yeah, definitely. And in their yearly uh, Prabhupada, they write something, right? Uh, I mean, Vyasa Puja offering. There they're asking for uh, to Prabhupada material desires. Please fulfill my material desires very easily. <laughs> Spiritual master is to fulfill your material desires. Huh? Very strange. Huh? Yes. Yeah. So therefore, we have to know, you know, uh, unless you read, how you will understand these things. Hmm? Mm. And if you read and you don't understand, Robert, say you read again. Hmm? Yes. All right, any other questions? Hmm? I have a, one question. Uh, hmm. I think just the other day you were giving a lecture on uh, on separatist, like if at the time of death, uh, if one, uh, what, uh, how to put in, um, if you don't consider each and every person as the servant of the Lord, like you see the Lord in everyone's heart, 
Mm. And you will not be peaceful. There was some verse that you showed. Mm. Um, can you show? It? So, obviously, like the, these offenders, definitely we have indifference to them. Right, Prabhu? Mm. Even at the time of death, we will have this indifference. Naturally, a separatist it means one who is practicing devotional service in the mode of passion, you know. So if you do devotional service in the mode of passion, mm -hmm. you cannot make advancement, you know. You're right. Hmm? This is from the Bhagavadam. Devotional service executed by a person who is envious, proud, violent, and angry, and who is a separatist, is considered to be in the mode of darkness. Mm. 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 Yes, from. So if you practice devotional service in this consciousness, then it's difficult for you to make spiritual advancement. No? Yes. Prabhu. The worship of the deities in the temple by a separatist with a motive for material enjoyment, fame, and opulence is devotion in the mode of passion. So you have devotional service in the mode of goodness, mode of passion, and mode of ignorance. Mm -hmm. So if you are doing devotional like this, it's going to be difficult, no? Yes. Yes? Yes, sir. Mm. So you need to be guided by a stronger devotees, advanced yes, devotees. Otherwise, you know, you may start thinking. When a devotee worships the Supreme Personality of Godhead and offers the results of his activities in order to free himself from the inabilities of fruitive activities, his devotion is in mode of goodness. Hmm. Hmm. Prabhu, this is a little confusing, Prabhu. Uh, huh? What? Uh, that that verse is a little confusing. Can you help me understand, Prabhu? Which verse? The one which you showed just now. Which one? The one uh, mode of passion, inebriates. Yeah. So. If anyone is doing devotional service with all this kind of a desire in the heart, then definitely mm -hmm. is devotion, no? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. the for material enjoyment, fame and opulence is devotion in the mode of passion. Yeah, the next verse after this, bro. The one which you should. This is devotional service in the mode of goodness. Yeah, this one, Prabhu, offers the results of his... Okay, in the, okay, right. okay mm -hmm. he's not taking the fruit of activity, but he's just giving away all the results, like karmani vadi karaste ma phale shukadachana, Prabhu. Mm. As okay. long as he's doing it for the Krishna and Guru, then it's all right. Hmm? Mm -hmm. But he's doing for himself with the interest of getting some name, fame, glorification and all. That's uh, not very good, no? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very careful that when we are doing devotional service, we are not getting, you know, mm -hmm. all this contamination. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we need the help of the spiritual master who can detect this and correct us. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes, Ravi. Mm. Otherwise, we can get carried away, no? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the best singer, you know, and get very proud, no? Mm -hmm. Best manager, I'm best this or that, you know? Mm -hmm. Or like in my case, you know, I think that, oh, I know every sloka, you know, I'm so proud, no? Mm -hmm. So I also can get, you know, completely contaminated. Mm -hmm. 
It's very dangerous, you know. Yes, true. So to become not proud, that is the success of a devotee. Mm. So if a person get all these opulence and not proud, that is the mercy of the Lord, no? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, Ram. Mm. Yes. Yes, Ram. Yes, Prabhu. So, so Prabhu, in the same uh, thing, I got that verse that you were quoting in the lecture. It is the same, 329-23, Prabhu. Twenty-six, huh? Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Yes, Prabhu. So here, uh, one who offers me respect but is envious of the bodies of others and is therefore a separatist, never attains peace of mind because of his inimical behavior towards other living entities. Um, in, in the purport, Mm -hmm. the first line of the purport. It says, uh, in this verse, two phrases, Bhuteshu Baddha Vairasya, inimical towards others, and Dvishataha Para Kaye, envious of another's body, are significant. One who is envious or, or inimical towards others never experiences any happiness. So a devotee's vision therefore must be perfect. He should ignore bodily distinctions and should see only the presence of the part and parcel of the Supreme Lord and the Lord himself in the plenary expansion and you know, super soul. So uh, definitely this like the other camp, uh, uh, we know they're all offenders. So how should we see them? We definitely see them. This is referring to a devotee who make distinctions of bodies of others, you know? Okay. Animals or human to see, okay, okay. You know, like here you can see the verse below. If anyone makes distinction between other living entities because of their outlook, you know, yes. the same point is that Krishna is referring here to the, to seeing the super soul in everybody's heart, you know, even the animals or any living entity, you see. Mm -hmm. To make distinction, then you know it's a big offense, you know. So in the twenty-six verse, you see here. Can you read this? As the blazing fire of death, I cause great fear to those who ever make the least discrimination between himself and other living entities because of a differential outlook. Do you understand? Yes, Prabhu. And you see the cockroach and we're screaming and uh, you know, huh? yes? Yes, Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Huh? Uh, so, yes, Prabhu. So we don't look at them as indifferent, but when they mm -hmm. offend our guru is then we offending show guru, the discrimination uh, guru is another thing you know when you try to uh, maintain a bodily concept of the guru then that is a very big offense you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes yes sir okay, this is the worst The spiritual master should be considered to be directly the Supreme Lord because he gives the transcendental knowledge for enlightenment. Consequently, for one who maintains the material conception that the spiritual master is an ordinary human being, everything is frustrated. His enlightenment and his Vedic studies and knowledge are like the bathing of an elephant. Hmm? Yes. You understand? So therefore, we should be very careful, you know. Mm. That's around. Huh? Correct. 
You want to read this? The spiritual master is as good as the supreme. The spiritual master is as good as the supreme personality of Godhead, and therefore one who is very serious about spiritual advancement must regard the spiritual master in this way. Even a slight deviation from this understanding can create disaster in the disciples' Vedic studies and austerities. Mm. Yes. This is the problem, you know, they all start seeing Prabhupada as an ordinary soul. Mm -hmm. hmm? Yes, Prabhupada. Yes. You know, their whole argument is bogus, you know. If they can accept 16 rounds, why mm -hmm. they can Accept the rhythmic system. Huh? Correct. Yes. Yes, true. Yes. Yes, true. So, so our indifference to the other guru camp and all is not that we are inimical towards them. It is just because uh, we are trying to be careful by ourselves. And uh, uh, no, the whole idea with them is that we should avoid the association completely. Right. Hmm? Completely, yes, Prabhu. Pratikolya sevarjanam, yeah. Hmm. Oh, in this verse that uh, we quote many times, uh, friendship, you know, you know that. Yes, Prabhu, uh, cemented should be cemented. Swajati. Yeah. So you see, here we we are told to avoid totally, you know. Huh? Hmm. The devotee okay. should avoid a person whose character is not fixed. Okay, friendship yeah. should be cemented between uh, between persons with mutual interests and understanding. Such persons are said to be swajati of the same caste. The devotee should avoid a person whose character is not fixed in the standard understanding, even though he may be a Vaishnava or a devotee of Krishna. If his character is not correctively representative, then he should be avoided. One should steadily control the senses and the mind and strictly follow the rules and regulations. We should make friendships with persons of the same standard. So we cannot say, you know, they are okay, we are okay. It doesn't work, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. We should avoid their association altogether. Yes. Sir. This is what your Bangalore and all trying, you know. They think everybody is good, no? Compromising, yes, sir. This is dangerous. Mm. And you can get contaminated, you know. Mm. Yes. Yes, Prabhu. Mm. Uh, we cannot. We cannot try to think that you know. After all, they are also devotees. They are also chanting. Yeah. <laughs> mm? Yes. Yes, Prabhu. Mm. So it's clearly so. See everybody equal, you know. Unless you are a pure devotee, if you are not, you act like one, you will fall down. Mm. Yes? Yes. So here it is clearly asking us to discriminate, uh, you know, those who are not up to the standard or you know, who, those who are deviating. Right, Prabhu? Mm. Yes, Swajati. So, Swajati, yes, Prabhu. So, no, so. cannot associate with them, you know. Yes, Prabhu. As if you do, because you're not so strong, you will get contaminated. Yes, from. Mm. And okay. then they are sending probe, but then you are saying they are okay. How is it possible? Mm? Yes, Prabhu. Correct. Yes, Prabhu. Right. When we follow this, that means the verse which was there in uh, 329.26 is not basically applicable. That is, you are saying to all animals in general. Mostly to seeing the super soul in the heart of all living entities. All living entities, right. 
that is advanced stage you know to understand god that's why we this verses i quote usually speaking to meditators you know oh okay so meditators they they're killing animals you know mm. but if you distinction and kill animal then this is you see how krishna is not happy you know mm. yes trouble mm. for devotees then you have to quote all these verses you know mm. different verses for mm. those verses are not applicable for devotees you know? different mm. different one yeah got it trouble So, anything else before we thank all of you for your kind association? That's all, Prabhu. I think. Thank you, you very, much. very much today. Thank, thank you very much, Prabhu. Thank, thank you very so much. much. Thank you very much.